So I'm here with Lady Ingleby. Um, it's lovely of you to pop by and have a chat with us. I'm really interested to know some of the history behind Ripley Castle because obviously when people come for an event in a place like this, nine times out of ten what draws them is certainly part of the history of the place that they're either going to get married in or hold their event in. Yeah. Now I know that this has been in the family for 700 years but past that I don't know very much at all so I was hoping you might better give us a, a potted history. Um, 700 years of history and 28 generations is quite a lot to put. I know, it's a bit of a In essence, <laughs> the oldest bit is the gatehouse. Okay. Um, uh, which is the 1400s, and then the old tower, no, fifth, sorry, 1500s, the old tower is 1600s, and okay. that's the kind of Tudor tower. Yep. Um, there was originally, and there are some uh, pictures behind us here in the drawing room, of the original, it would have been an old manor house, it would have started as a castellated tower to protect right. the family. Very much like if you see the old films, um, Robin Hood and things, where yeah, yeah. They, they all retreat to a turreted yes. keep. And the family would have lived on the top floors, yeah. servants in the middle floors, and um, anyone who wanted to hide, and animals in the bottom floor. So that's yeah. the very old bit. It was attached to an old manor house, okay. uh, very sensibly. That was knocked down in the um, 18th century, and um, in the Georgian time uh, by Sir John Ingleby, and Sir William Ingleby, and basically it was flattened and a Georgian house was tacked on. Uh, right. So what we're sitting in at the moment is an elegant Georgian house. Now, if you decided 600 years ago what would be the ideal place to be of interest to lots of people, that's exactly what you do, because yeah. Georgian is much lighter, much brighter, yeah. much more elegant. The tower it certainly rooms, is. The, yeah, the panelled rooms are just smack of history, but from a, a kind of doing things in them. It's very, yes, they're very actually hard. lived in. They're, they're lived in and they're, they're much dark, uh, darker and smaller and they are what they are. You know, they're yeah. much smaller people and the, the staircase originally would have been a winding staircase. You can hardly get 200 people up there for an event. No, that would certainly be a challenge. So, <laughs> so we, we're sitting in mainly the Georgian bit and then the lakes and the um, gardens are Capability Brown. And right. uh, so he was the famous 18th century landscaper. So you get that lovely setting. So... Sometimes you built your house, then you designed the landscape around it. Sometimes you saw a, a, an optimum landscape and you put the house in the best setting. Yeah, and you've certainly, as we were talking about previously when we were chatting, you mentioned the fact that this drawing room has been built to really take and captivate the views. And certainly the dining room, yeah. you were saying, is where it is because of the, where the sun sets. Yeah, I mean, interestingly, they used to kind of do it. The architect would draw you an amazing house then the builders would come in and have to work out the layout within the house. So you would have designed, when they did these fantastic elegant designs of Blenheim and Chatsworth and all the big houses, you had this beautiful drawing and it would look fantastic from the outside. Yeah. Then you'd fit the internal bits around, around it. So, that. so you'll see sometimes there's a fake window because there's a brick wall runs down the middle of the window in order <laughs> to get the house. So interestingly, yeah. the outside didn't always talk to the inside designers. So which is so was, different to what they do now. so different now yeah. when it's designed down to the last degree. Yeah, it really is. Well, and I, I sometimes think that they think about the outside later, you know. Yeah, it's, it's certainly not done in the same way, no. not by any stretch of the imagination. But then I guess we also don't have the space to be able to look at things in the same way either. No, and you know, sometimes we're hampered by planners. You know, in those days, if you had money and you had power and you owned the land, they did what they wanted. Yeah. Now you go through, I mean, we, if we want to do anything, we're involved with about five or diff six different societies. You've got Edwardian, Georgian... Victorian, wow, I mean, it's just okay. every time you want to do anything because the so house much red tape involved. dates from so far back. Um, yeah. And then, you know, we have to deal with English heritage and our local planners. So it takes us up just to Just saying you know, that just gives me a nightmare plans. headache. No, no. <laughs> just the thought of it. Mm. So what would make you want to take a place like Ripley Castle and turn it into um, basically an event venue? What was the thought process behind that? Because obviously it's not always been an event venue. No, it was a private home till um, my husband's... Um, it was his grandparents and his father. In fact, it was a leak in the roof and dry rot in the old tower. They ah, needed to okay. take money. Um, they, ne they didn't have enough money to do it. They took a grant, which the government yeah. would then offer you. But in exchange for that, you opened to the public. So the house right. was then opened as okay. a day visitor thing. So we had visitors from April to October. Yeah. Um, I mean, originally it was a month or two a year. Then it stretched from April to October, which is the traditional stately home opening times. Right. Then uh, his father died when he was 18, we got married and we just took a view that if we were open, you know, perhaps we could open more. And actually Harrogate opened a conference centre and literally people knocked on the door and said, do you do dinners? And we kind of sat there thinking, do you know, we've got a dining room that's We don't, but sporty. we could. <laughs> we certainly could. Yeah. And it literally started and that's with me doing from. the cooking. Absolutely. Thomas laid the tables and yeah. the 
domestic staff then who were really only cleaners, so we didn't have butlers and people, um, started, you know, used to wait on and I would cook the meal and then if they wanted us to sit down, we'd change into our posh clothes and pretend we had nothing to do with it. Fabulous. That's the sort of stories so people love exactly to hear. exactly how we started. And that's where it's come from to where it is today. I mean, how many events do you know? How many events that you do here I don't at know Ripley? how many we do a year. We do 120 weddings a year. We must do um, so that's a fair 200 few. and something events a year. Because you've got the two different sides, haven't you? So yeah. you can effectively have two different events well, running at the same time. Well, that was a development. We, we had the, one of the reasons, again, you say, why did we open, is, is to earn the money yeah. to repair. We had, we knew, a £2 million repair bill um, in England if you're listed and part of it is falling down the government and your council can make you put it back up and then what happens is you right. have to pay for it so we always knew so they we tell had you to, to do save. it but you've they got to, to fund it, it. You've got to do it so we knew we had to save to, yeah. build, to rebuild what's now known as the east wing which was the old coach houses and right. so that's what we decided to do so we we then started looking at more events so it was deliberately designed the, the, the East Wing, the difference between the two is these are list, this listed rooms, they're open to the public, it's a heritage tour, so all the furniture and everything is left in. There's yeah. only one room, which we call the morning room, which we leave empty because we used to open it in the daytime visitors yeah. and then lay it for tables at night. It's exhausting. It, takes, it would be a big, it's a big it, turnaround, it isn't it? seven bells out of the furniture and painting, so it's much imagine. easier to leave one room open. And we're limited in the castle that we can only do um, up to about 60 in a room. Right. In the East Wing, we had marquees on the lawns for 10 months of the year oh, to do the bigger okay. weddings. Yeah. Our optimum weddings and events were 120. We could get 120 into the East Wing if we converted it. So it was actually a development part yeah. of the business plan. But, yeah, um, over a substantial period of time. But actually, it's time. turned out that gives us a lovely product because if you were doing a massive product launch and you wanted to um, put up spectacular lights, I can't have it here, I've got chandeliers... Yeah. Whereas over there, it's designed that it is a bare canvas. Yeah. And people can do what they like. So some people like the intimacy and the history here. You've got the history over there, but it's bigger yeah, and it's a little and more not blank as intimate. canvasy. Yeah. And I wouldn't let you drive a car into the rooms here, even if you could get them through the door. Surprisingly enough. No. Surprisingly <laughs> enough. Whereas over there, we'd take the glass doors off the hinges and say, go for it. Well, it's been more purpose-built over in that particular area, I'm assuming. Yeah, it so was, to allow you to do more things like that. built to house and carriages. Te Sorry, but but you're right, yes, developed. Yeah. developed. So therefore you can accommodate something yeah. a little bit different, which, yeah. yeah, is the appeal, I guess. Yeah. Well, there is one final thing I'd like to ask you. Houses of this type, you expect to have some kind of unusual rooms, hidey holes, and I know that you do have a secret passageway somewhere. We have, um, we, well, actually, we had two originally. Ah, oh, uh, two. And they're actually, um, we're on the passageways, they're priest's holes, and they were developed um, when uh, we had all the changing of religions, uh, Henry yeah. VIII, uh, followed by, so Catholic, Protestant, break away from the Church, yeah. Reformation. Uh, the Inglebys were a very old Catholic family, and okay. in fact, were um, Francis Ingleby. Uh, was a Catholic priest who was hung, drawn and quartered at York for his faith. So we have a, okay, uh, so definitely a blessed Catholic in the family. Then. And he was determined to pursue his faith. So there were originally two priest holes. We think one was lost when they knocked down the old manor house. Right, okay. Because uh, oh, we never found it. Yep. But they didn't find the uh, one up in the knight's chamber until they took the grant, were redoing all the timber, and that's pulled back when the panelling. There was a very well hidden priest's hole, so Fantastic. we do have. Um, it, it's more of a hole than a passageway, but it's where a priest would have sat hiding. And we believe that Sir William uh, Ingleby hid in it after the Battle of Marston Moor to escape Oliver Cromwell. Now that's what you call a piece of history. So that's a piece of history, and you can go and try and see if you can find it. That's a challenge. I think I might have to take you up on that. <laughs>